Sa bawat kwento ng pag-unlad ay may mga institusyong nagsusulong nito. Institusyong nagbabahagi at tumutugon sa mga hamon ng panahon. PICARD supports SNT Human Resource Development. Nagsusulong ito ng mga programa na naglalayong mapaunlad at mapayaman ang kakayahan ng mga researchers natin sa bansa at mga empleyadong katulad ko for better delivery of SNT products and services. Sinusuportahan namin ang ating mga dalubhasa na kaisa natin upang masenso ang ating bansa. Tumutulong kami na maging makabuluhan ang mga teknolohiya upang magbigay ng karagdagang kabuhayan sa ating mga mamamayan. Nagbibigay kami ng mga bagong kaalaman at teknolohiya na gagabay sa pagkalinga ng ating kalikasan at magpapaunlad sa kabuhayan ng mga magsasaka at mangingisda. Isinusulong namin ang paggamit na agham at teknolohiya bilang pagsagot sa mga hamon ng lipunan. Kasama ninyo ang DOST Picard sa pagpapaunlad ng sektor ng agrikultura, akwatika at pangisdaan, at likas na yaman. Sa gabay ng agham at teknolohiya, kami ay nakatuon sa pagpapataas ng produksyon ng pagkain. Sa pagpapabuti ng kalidad ng pamumuhay lalo sa kanayunan, sa pag-aalaga at pagpapatanag ng ating kalikasan, at sa pagpapalakas ng kapasidad at pamamalakad sa pananaliksik at pagunlad. Ang DOST Picard ay nangunguna sa pagbibigay ng kakayanan sa pagsasaka, akwatika at pangisdaan, at panglikas na yaman upang makipagsabayan ng sektor sa pandaigdigang pamantayan. Narito po ang DOST Picard upang tulungan ng ating mga magsasaka, mangingisda at ang nasa sektor ng likas na yaman sa pamamagitan ng agama at teknolohiya. Isinasagawa ng DOST Picard ang aming mga programa sa pamagitan ng pakikipag-ugnayan sa iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno, state universities and colleges, at mga international partners. Ito ang DOST Picard. Kami ang DOST Picard.
Signore vi rendi uno strumento della vostra pace Lasciarlo seminare l'amore. Sang awit ng Pilipinas. I would like to extend my warmest greetings to everyone attending this event. On behalf of the DOSTP card, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to Polisciencia's second panel talk. Polisciencia, in the tagline, Toward Science-Informed Policies, strives to ensure that the wealth of knowledge and insights from supported research and development projects are integrated into policy discourse. It is also part of Polisciencia's initiatives to advocate the research findings effectively, and more importantly, 
for these findings to be widely known and accessible to the public. This is the rationale behind the panel talk. Policiencia Panel Talk is an event that highlights the key findings, completed or ongoing policy studies funded by the Council. This event is driven to create more engaging and personal discussions by bringing together experts from the academe, private sector, associates from the Congress and Senate, research and development institutions, other government agencies and policymakers to discuss relevant and pressing policy issues that need to be addressed. While policy and science are two of the most important phases of development, the disconnect between the two often brings forth ineffective and unsustainable policy solutions that lead to undesirable consequences. Recognizing this, Picard is at vantage point to intensify our efforts in advocating for evidence-based and science-informed policies through a more proactive approach. Through the panel talk, we offer a channel where key people in the scientific community can establish connections, build relationships, and form alliances with individuals and groups who are able to influence policymaking and people who have the power to make a difference. In the end, the strengthened linkage between our policymakers and scientists will foster and engender enabling policy solutions for the betterment of the economy and society. Moreover, today's event is also a great opportunity for our network and audience to be informed of the results of policy studies supported by the DUST, particularly on watershed-based land use planning and management. The watershed is among the priority areas of DUST Picard. They play key roles in providing ecosystem functions, specifically provisioning, regulating, supporting, and sociocultural functions. Yet, more than 100, 140 watersheds in the Philippines are in critical state. Hence, over the years, the Council has been supporting a number of policy analysis and advocacy-related projects for the development of watershed-based land use planning. Before I end this message, I would like to congratulate the Socioeconomics Research Division led by Dr. Ernesto Brown for hosting this event. I also would like to express my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to our panelists for supporting DOST Picard in the pursuit of an enabling policy environment in the AANR sector. Yusek Mercedita Sumbilla of the National Economic and Development Authority Forrester Nelson Gorospe of the River Basin Control Office, Mr. Mick Ivan Sumilang of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, Environmental and Land Use Policies Division, Ms. Maria Teresa De Luna of the Provincial Government of Aurora, Environment and Natural Resources Office, and Academician Rex Victor Cruz, of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. I hope that the participants in this activity will find this topic highly engaging and relevant. Muli, maraming salamat po at magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Good morning, maganda umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, before we get started, I would like to express my uh, sincere appreciation to all the panelists and uh, to Dr. Ibora for making this event uh, possible. Welcome to uh, Polisensia's second panel talk on watershed-based land use planning and uh, management in the Philippines. Uh, last year, our first a panel talk focused on the policy constraints of the financial management uh, system uh, here in the Philippines. Uh, for this episode, we will feature the ongoing policy advocacy uh, institutionalization of guidelines on watershed integrated area land use uh, planning or WILUP uh, towards resiliency under the leadership of uh, Dr. Vida uh, Karandang, 
of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Uh, this project actually took off from a Picard-funded uh, policy study of Dr. Rex Cruz titled uh, Policy Studies uh, and Development to Promote the Resiliency of Philippine uh, Watersheds. And we're happy that uh, Dr. Cruz uh, will be joining us later as a panelist to share uh, his insights on the Watershed Ecosystem Management, or WEM, or WEM, uh, or uh, uh, popularly known as the Ridge Tree uh, Framework, R2R, and uh, explain in general what the project uh, is trying to achieve. I think there is no question that uh, land use planning uh, should be watershed-based. Time and again, we have, uh, we have seen how typhoons uh, triggered massive uh, flooding, especially in uh, areas with uh, degraded watersheds. Uh, we all know uh, the extremely important role that watershed plays in water capture, uh, storage, and release. Uh, and we also know that watershed often straddle between separate geographical or political boundaries. Uh, therefore, unless land use uh, plans are ultimately anchored on the watershed, then such plans will always be fragmented or disjointed. In this uh, panel talk, we hope to discuss the imperatives for watershed-based land use planning, the challenges uh, to achieving uh, to achieving this, and um, ways by which uh, such challenges can be um, uh, overcome. Uh, together with our partners from the academe. Uh, private sector and uh, other government agencies. I hope that the panel discussion will steer us into more substantial and timely actions to improve the management of our watersheds and uh, protect those that are um, in a critical state uh, already. Again, it is with the great pleasure uh, that I uh, welcome you to our uh, second uh, Polycentia panel talk. Thank you. Land use planning ensures that natural resources, especially land, are optimally used without impairing the ecosystem services. Unregulated land use planning may result in soil erosion, river siltation, loss of biodiversity, and ecosystem degradation. Despite the presence of laws and policies related to sustainable land use in the Philippines, there are still issues on horizontal and vertical integration of plants. Some of the findings of the completed project policy studies and development to promote the resiliency of Philippine watersheds include Number 1. Local land use plans are inadequately connected with higher level physical framework plans. Number two, several local government units sharing jurisdiction over the same watershed are usually not synced. These prompted the DOSTP card to support the project. Institutionalization of Guidelines on Watershed Integrated Area Land Use Planning or WELOOP towards resiliency. This is to facilitate the institutionalization of the proposed guidelines on WILUP. Specifically, the WILUP project aims to attain the objectives through the following strategies. Number one, advance the advocacy agenda by building partnerships with DENR, DILG, DHSUD, NEDA, and other agencies. 
The team will identify and analyze key stakeholders, then establish partnerships through technical working groups. Possible allies engaging policy champions and agents of change will be established, and trainings on Willop will be introduced to build constituencies. Number 2. Facilitate the adoption of a policy instrument that will initiate the implementation of the Watershed Ecosystem Management Framework. This will be done by drafting Executive Order Institutionalizing Willop, an Administrative Order including guidelines on Willop. Other activities will involve working closely with partner agencies in finalizing the proposal and modification of the guidelines. Number 3. Improve appreciation of the Watershed Ecosystem Management Framework and wheel up among the key stakeholders. An advocacy kit will be developed which includes a policy briefer, a policy reform brochure, and information, education, and communication materials on watershed resiliency. And information awareness campaigns will also be launched. Number 4. Demonstrate the Willow as the basis for updating comprehensive land use plans in selected local government units to showcase its doability and advantages over existing approaches. The pilot testing will take place in Los Baños, Laguna, in San Gabriel, La Union. Seminar workshops involving several planning personnel of local government units from selected provinces will also be conducted. Ultimately, all of this will lead to the promotion of watersheds, ecosystems, and people, driving resilient and sustainable local and national development. Magandang magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Welcome to the second Polyscientia panel talk. This event is hosted by the DOST Picard to create an engaging space where we discuss and highlight the findings from policy studies and advocacy projects supported by the Council. Last year, in our first panel talk, we discussed the constraints on the conduct of publicly funded research and development projects, and we elicited very insightful analysis and stories from our guests. And for this year, we are featuring one of the policy research areas of PICARD, which is the Watershed Ecosystem Management, also known as the Reach to Reach, Reach to Reef Approach to Management. And we will discuss why it is essential to integrate this framework into our planning and what should be prioritized to facilitate the full implementation of such a holistic approach. As mentioned earlier by Dr. Brown, our discussion would be based on two policy analysis and advocacy projects supported by the OSTP card. And my name is Mia Aranas from the Socioeconomics Research Division of Picard, and we are honored to be joined by esteemed members of the panel, starting with Academician Rex Victor Cruz, professor from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and also the project leader of the Picard funded projects earlier mentioned. We also have, and we're very fortunate to have with us, Undersecretary Mercedita Sambilia the Undersecretary for Regional Development Group of the National Economic Development Authority. Next, we have Director Nelson Gorospe, the Executive Director for River Basin Control Office under the DENR. And we also have Mr. Mick Ivan Sumilang, the Division Chief of the Environmental Land Use Policies Division of Environmental Land Use and Urban Planning Development Bureau of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. And lastly, we're happy to have with us here in the discussion, Ms. Maria Teresa, or Ma'am Babes, the Luna from the Provincial Government of Aurora. Muli, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng ating mga panelists sa pagbabahagi ng iyong mga oras at kaalaman. Now, we open the discussion on watershed ecosystem. And we'd like to start 
with DNR RBCO. Hello, Director Nelson. Hi, sir. Good morning, and thank you for accepting our invitation. So, okay, uh, just good morning, sir. Just just to set this discussion, uh, can you explain for our audience what watershed ecosystem management is and why it is essential in land resource management, sir? Uh, before anything else, I would like to thank uh, Picard for uh, giving us this opportunity to participate in this uh, panel uh, discussion. Um, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. So, yung Rich Tariff uh, Framework uh, talks about uh, integrated management and development of uh, water, land, forest, and coastal resources in within and inside a river basin or a watershed. It takes a look at the upland, lowland, coastal ecosystem continuum, including the biodiversity resources and the wetlands. It uh, uses a uh, watershed as uh, the land use planning unit, as it does not uh, consider political boundaries, but rather the natural uh, boundaries, which are the watershed divide. Um, in terms of uh, its usefulness, it's important to maintain the ecological integrity of uh, the watersheds, meaning um, occurrences in the upland uh, affects the lowland, uh, the agricultural areas, um, the residential areas, the urban uh, centers, and the coastal areas and vice versa. So in effect, the uh, health of uh, the... Uh, coastal uh, zones uh, is an indicator of uh, the uh, health of uh, the watersheds. Um, it's imp also important uh, to adopt the WEM or the Ridge uh, Tariff Framework so we can incorporate uh, climate change adaptation as well as uh, risk resiliency management. Uh, the framework um, is an important guide to the LGUs and the stakeholders in crafting their own land use and development plans. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director Nelson. Um, Sir Rex, uh, I'm sure you would like to, to add uh, to that uh, explanation. Um, really, just, a, yeah, just perhaps uh, one or two lines, and that is uh, the rich tariff approach or the uh, watershed ecosystem management approach to land use planning ensures that there is balance between, um, uh, between economic development as well as uh, protection of environment and the, ecology and, and the ecosystems. You know? So uh, we, in other words, it is a recognition that the um, sustainability of the physical system and the natural system, which are the ecosystems and the watersheds, are uh, important uh, are important um, a foundation of a sustainable economic development you know and that's why it is really very uh, it is really you know uh, uh, very opportunistic for us you know that uh, we already started investing on this first from the uh, use of watershed approach to forest resources management and that was uh, uh, several decades ago two de decades ago in the late 1990s i think 1999 and then, of course, in 2013, you know, that was a breakthrough in comprehensive land use planning when the Ridge Tariff approach was uh, was uh, enshrined as one of the key principles of uh, the preparation of comprehensive land use plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir X and Director Nelson. Now, um, we'd, we'd like to hear from uh, the other panel members uh, about the current state of the land use planning in the country. And, of course, uh, we start with the country's socioeconomic planning body. Uh, you, Sexumbilia, uh, at the macro level or perhaps in, in, in terms of the national or the regional physical planning, uh, how is the WEM framework or the Reach 3 framework uh, being integrated? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. And before that, I would like to, you know, greet everybody. Good morning to all the panelists that are here and to all the, you know, the participants in this uh, Policentia uh, webinar. Uh, I would also like to thank the 
you know, uh, Picard, the OST Picard for invi inviting Neda. Because uh, especially at this point we're in, you know, uh, I would like to announce that we are now in the, 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 we are now starting the formulation of the Philippine Development Plan 2022 to 2027. And as I already mentioned a while ago, while we were talking at the, uh, uh, the backstage, uh, this plan will have, you know, the climate change, you know, uh, be the, the central theme. And with cl climate change, definitely the watershed uh, management will be a very, very uh, critical uh, consideration to, to this. And so my direct answer to your question, Mia, is, you know, yes, uh, watershed ecosystem management framework or the rich to rift, as, you know, uh, 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 probably more commonly known to everyone, is very much considered in uh, planning exercises, both at the national and the regional uh, levels. Because this is primarily because NEDA recognizes, and I think you know many of, of our agencies recognize the importance of adopting an integrated and holistic framework, cutting across all sectors, geographic boundaries, demographic classification, and even time horizon. No, we really have to talk about intertemporal, you know, uh, 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 considerations when we do already this planning. Chapter 20 of the Philippine Development uh, 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 Plan 2017-2022, and its updated version, which aims to ensure ecological integrity, clean and healthy environment, espouses strategies grounded on the watershed ecosystem management or the ridge to reef framework. And among the priority strategies include the, adop include the adoption of integrated, and science-based restoration approaches to rehabilitate critical watersheds. And clearly, these are the rich tourist approaches that also take into consideration the interdependence of different ecosystems. The PDP also includes specific strategies that support watershed ecosystem management, yes. such as accelerating and improving forest uh, protection and reforestation, scaling up comprehensive water resource assessment, improving and scaling up sustainable use and management of inland uh, wetlands, caves and cave systems, and conducting research on terrestrial ecological connectivity. Yeah. It also advocates a national spatial strategy. Take note of this. First time in, 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 in all the Philippine Development Plan, we included the National Spatial Strategy that builds on the National Physical Framework Plan. And this sets the direction of growth in the country based on economic and population trends and with ecological consideration to ensure the establishment of settlements outside of environmentally sensitive uh, areas, locations such as the flood prone areas, steep slopes, protected areas, and watershed. It also recognizes the increasing role of cities as engines of economic growth and the need to enhance connectivity to ensure efficient service delivery systems. Uh, the NSS also incorporates a vulnerability reduction strategy to build the resilience of communities to natural hazards and other you know, uh, uh, human uh, you know, hazards. I mean, hazards that could be, uh, you know, uh, caused by human activities. So, yun yun yung ano ng, ng PDP, uh, yun ang mga laman ng PDP, strategies of the PDP, na sumasaklaw at nagre-recognize dito sa import, uh, you know, the importance of this rich to reef uh, management, uh, Mia. Back to you. Thank you. Maraming maraming salamat, Yusek Mercy. And uh, we would be uh, really happy, uh, more than willing to be part of the crafting of the next PDP, ma'am. And so um, thank you, thank you again for, for clarifying that. Uh, now, uh, going to the Sud, uh, I believe, uh, I understand this is the newest executive department represented here uh, in our panel, Sir Ivan. Um, I would also like to ask, uh, is WEM in principle integrated with policies or regulations governing land use planning at this point and, and how? C can you share to us what, what's happening right now? Ayun, no. uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Magandang umaga po sa mga tagaplano ng bayan. No? And uh, thank you po sa pag-invite sa amin dito. 
Um, yes po, uh, actually, meron na kaming, ano, nung, uh, nung ni-release yung uh, updated guidebook, no? Nung 2014 for the sectoral studies. Katulad ng binanggit ni uh, Dr. Rex, no? Uh, talagang ano na siya, uh, pinapasok na yung konsepto ng ano, yung konsepto ng Ridge to Reap, no? At saka yung konsepto ng Integrated Ecosystem Management. Um, kung babalikan natin yung ano, no? Yung mga nangyayari sa nakalipas na apat na dekada, marami na kasing ano din, issuances, no? At as well as yun nga, nandito na yung bisud. So, pwede ko bang ano, i-share sa inyo yung mga nangyayari nung nakalipas na apat na dekada at ano na yung ginagawa ng bisud, no? Na related dito sa ating usapin. So, Sige, basically, kung, apa, so, so, basically po, kung babalikan natin, uh, nagsimula po yung usapin ng pagpaplano noong ano, 1976- uh, nagsimula ito po nung Human Settlements Commission pa. And then naging Ministry of Human Settlements po ito nung 1978. And then nung dumating na yung, ano, yung uh, HLURB nung 1986, dito po na-release yung, uh, yung uh, EO90 as well as nung 1991 po na-release yung RA7160 and yung EO72 no? uh, na, na nagmamandato sa mga LGU na gumawa ng... Uh, ng ating mga CLUPs. And during the 90s po, uh, git, ang meron tayo yung uh, town planning guidelines, no? And then noong 2006, uh, nag, nag-release ang HLURB nung first uh, CLUP guidebook. And then noong 2013, uh, na-release po yung volume 1, yung updated na volume 1, at saka yung binabanggit ko kanina, yung volume 2, yung uh, uh, sectoral studies natin. Dito na po yung na-highlight ko, sab- sabi ka kanina, dito na na-highlight yung Ridge to Reap and Integrated Ecosystem Management. And binabanggit na rin po dito yung ecosystem analysis, resource mapping, uh, forest ecosystem, and integrated watershed analysis. So dun po sa integrated watershed analysis, ang focus po lang dito nung, uh, nung krinap ito noong 2014 is yung vegetative cover ng watershed, or geologic hazards, and water production value of the watersheds. Kasama na rin yung environmentally constrained or critical areas. So dito sa ecosystem analysis, hindi lang din yung uh, usapin ng, uh, sa forest, kundi yung coastal uh, planning, pinag-uusapan na rin and yung biodiversity. And pagdating naman po nung 2015, no, uh, doon na lumabas yung guidebook natin for the climate and disaster risk assessment o yung SIDRA. And then nung 2017 po, uh, na-release po yung ating National Urban Development and Housing Framework. So pagdating po ng 2019, no, uh, pumasok po na po yung DISUD law. Ito na po yung DISUD. Uh, si DISUD po kasi, or yung RA11201, ito na po yung merging ni HADSI at saka ni HLURP. And from then on po, meron na kaming mga na-release no, na, na nakatulong or nag ensure na yung usapin ng uh, integration ng, uh, ng higher plans ay uh, nako-consider sa pagpaplano at the local level no. Ito na po nag-release po recently lang no. Ano uh, 2021 nag-release po kami po nung ano revise review and approval process sa CLUP as well as doon po sa ating TPFP or PDPFP. So tinitingnan namin dito, uh tinecheck muna namin dito bago ma-approve. Ano ba yung mga titingnan ng ating mga partner agencies sa PILOC? Ano yung mga titingnan sa ARLOC? Ano yung hahanapin nila? Ito ba ay nakadikit? Yung mga plano ba natin ay nakadikit sa kalakihang pagpaplano ng ano ng ano? For example, yun, kinonsider ba yung usapin ng watershed? Kasi sa experience namin, uh, pag hindi nag-usap talaga yung mga LGUs, no? yung magkakalapit, talagang maapektuhan. For example, yung, yung, yung usapin natin na nagde-develop sa taas pero pagdating ng tagulan, binabaha po yung mga nasa baba. So yun po, mahalaga po yung pag-uusap and Dito po sa ating mga revised review and approval process, yun po, kinoconsider na po yun. As well as, uh, nag-release din po ang, ano, ang recently ang DISUD noong 2021, ng National Housing and Urban Development Sector Plan, uh, na yung plano na yun hanggang 2040. Uh, pinag-uusapan na rin po natin dito yung Bioregional Development Program. So, Ano po ba itong uh, bioregional development program? So ito yung po yung pinag-uusapan na rin natin dito yung ano uh, ridge to reap planning approach. 
and uh, yung key components po niya is pagdidelineate ang boundaries and consolidate and consolidation ng uh, regul- regulatory jurisdictions of different national and local uh, government agencies and um uh, provision of technical support and guidelines for creation and development of uh, authorities or formal LGU alliances and uh, enforcement of ridge to reefs planning integrated watershed planning approach and uh, mainstreaming of water sensitive urban design in CLUP guidelines and detailed guidelines for low impact low emission development and LGUs no and meron din po kami ni release yung ano ating ano Sidra CHM uh, Sidra Analytics and ito po yung bago no uh, yung Sidra at the provincial level uh, pinag-uusapan na rin po namin ito with UN Habitat and uh, DNR. So ito po pre-prepare na. As well as uh, may talk din po kami with NEDA, DILG, DBM and DOF. Uh, yung pong pag-update natin ng ano ng uh, provincial development and physical framework plan in which talagang malaki yung consideration namin dito sa ano sa watershed up, uh, watershed approach no o yung reach to reef. Kasi dapat ano dapat yung mga plano kapag nagawa na itong uh, provincial plans no dapat dito nakaangkla yung at nag-uusap yung mga plano at the municipal and city level no and yun may ginagawa may ni-release din kami recently yung CLUP com plan so it requires uh, the LGUs to communicate their plans no para alam ng mga tao din kung ano yung plano nila uh, plano ng ating mga LGUs no mahalaga din dito kung pag-uusapan natin yung watershed and uh, recently meron din kami pong uh, sa usapin ng resiliency, uh, pinoformulate po ng department yung uh, resilient and green human settlements framework. no uh, Malapit na rin po itong matapos and uh, for sharing na din po ito with the other agencies. And kinukonsider din po dito yung watershed. And yun po, uh, kanina nakita ko, pinapanood ko yung video na nishare yung mga issues. No? Uh, isa po sa mga nakikita namin to solve uh, para masabi na yung plano ay nasusunod uh, dito po sa department, uh, pinag-uusapan na namin yung pagde-develop ng monitoring framework as well as gusto kasi namin itahi ito doon sa Mandanas Garcia ruling no? na mas, ano, mas uh, ma-intensify yung uh, supervision and uh, pag-monitor ng uh, national government agencies. And with that po, hinahanda na namin yung monitoring framework. So hindi na rin lang po tayo nag, ano, uh, nag-uusap tungkol sa presence or, or or absence kung nagpasa ba sila ng CLUP o hindi and uh, tumatalo na tayo doon sa implementation no uh, ng ating mga plano and recently po meron tayong ano meron tayo ding uh, partnership with BMB no yung mainstreaming ng integrated coastal management and mainstreaming nun sa CLUP so with that po yun po lang yung ano yung uh, gusto namin pong i-share uh, in relation dito sa ating uh, uh, topic Thank you po. Thank, thank you. Salamat po, sir. So, medyo na touch nyo na yung iba na nating uh, gustong matanong sa inyo. But, uh, so, so clearly, uh, based sa mga sagot ni Yusek Mercy, uh, ni, ni Sir Ivan, uh, based on what we heard, there are already policy framework and measures that integrate WEM, the WEM framework. They're, they are already in place. No? So, my next question would be, uh, and this is for for the for mom babes from from PG Aurora, uh, for Sir Rex and also to for RBCO Director Nelson. My question be, uh, ano pa yung mga gaps po natin? So meron na tayong naka-integrate naman na sa national uh, mga policies po. So at at this point, what are the gaps that uh, we still need to address? Uh, siguro um, Sir Sir Nelson, would you like to go first? Okay, sa, sa akin, ano, um, hindi lang siguro gaps but uh, rather challenges uh, in land use planning. Una-una dito yung uh, population. Um, yung population um, has uh, resulted to unregulated uh, land use conversion. Dahil uh, with uh, population growth, uh, there is an increasing pressure for the production of uh, goods and services. And in most instances, uh, nagsasuffer dito yung ating mga watersheds. Then we have a um, question of uh, political will. Uh, although we have uh, good land use plans, sometimes when it comes to implementation, that's where the 
uh, problem lies. Um, then, of course, uh, among uh, yung ating mga local government units, always nagkakarap up yung political boundary conflicts. So, to a certain extent, uh, this has uh, affected our uh, land use planning process. Then, of course, uh, kakaroon tayo ng uh, conflicting mandates among government agencies. For example, uh, marami na sa ating mga headwaters, ng mga watersheds, are already converted into vegetable gardens for, uh, of course, uh, production of uh, food. And this is where the conflict of the mandate probably of uh, DA and the other agencies uh, uh, is manifested. Um, meron din of course yung mga fragmented and uncoordinated land development and management plans among the agencies. Um, siguro resulta rin ito ng mga conflicting mandates. And uh, very recently, as we have experienced uh, in uh, the DNR, um, yung one of the gaps would be real-time and uh, reliable data. Um, we have to uh, uh, update our uh, plans every so often. Um, hindi po pwedeng maging stagnant yung plans dahil it's a work in progress. Marami nangyayari. And then, of course, yung financing. Um, marami tayong mga ladyos plans. Um, napakalaki yung uh, mga financial requirements na uh, may problema sa impl- pag-implement ng mga na-identified na strategies sa yung mga activities. So again, um, Another one would be sustaining the interest and enthusiasm of the stakeholders. It's not um, it's not uh, rare na initially maganda yung reception when it comes to planning, but uh, once na ano uh, sometimes uh, the stakeholders uh, lose interest. Um, so. Yan lang mo na siguro yung what I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Director Nelson. Ngayon po, uh, we can, we, we'd like to go back to, to Sir Rex. Uh, we'd like to, to hear uh, your thoughts uh, on the gaps that you uh, that you found out from, from your study, sir. Um, sir, if you're speaking, we cannot hear you, sir. Oh, sorry. There you go. Um, yeah, um, I was trying to apologize, you know, for uh, failing to greet our uh, panelists and uh, our um, uh, viewing audience. Um, Over eager kasi ako for this forum. Anyway, uh, good morning to everyone, and thank you for this uh, uh, for this event that was organized or that is being uh, organized by Picard DOST. So anyway, uh, siguro konti lang, dami na kasing, you know, uh, the Director Nelson already mentioned a lot of uh, the important gaps, you know, that, uh, uh, that we need to address. Um, but uh, I think one of those will be, you know, especially referring to the local government units to promote um, a greater awareness and understanding, even appreciation you know, for the Ridge to Reef uh, approach based on our studies in 2017. You know, that's what we noted you know, from uh, those uh, LGUs that we have uh, studied, you know, that uh, they, uh, they, they don't have a sufficient, uh, sufficient understanding and appreciation for the concept and how it is to be operationalized. So I think that's one of the hurdles that we have to uh, consider addressing within the immediate uh, future. You know, and that is why this uh, advocacy project that is uh, being implemented now you know this is what we're talking about here in this uh, policy forum is uh to promote you know uh, capacity building and even uh, information and uh, communication uh, uh, activities so that we can heighten the understanding the appreciation and the operationalization of the concept of bridge to reef and uh, also you know just to emphasize it is not our intention here to set in place a new guideline no in the yon and we have we have been 
always emphasizing that the purpose of this advocacy project is to promote greater understanding and greater appreciation of what the concept is all about and how it is to be implemented in land use planning. And that's why we are partnering with uh, HLURB you know, in the uh, training component of uh, this project so that uh, together, you know, we can we can have a um, greater impact, you know, in terms of uh, clearer understanding of the concept of bridge to reef approach and how they are applied in uh, comprehensive land use planning. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, it's it's uh, it's really good that we have mom babes from PG Aurora. Uh, it's good that she joined us uh, because um, we want to hear from you, from your experience, ma'am, uh, from your level. Ano po ba yung mga gaps natin, mga challenges? Yes po. Uh, good morning po sa ating lahat. Salamat po sa invitation. Uh, ako lang po yung representative from LGU, uh, representative po ng aming governor. Uh, bali, ang province of Aurora po ay committed sa uh, preparation ng integrated area development planning for more than four decades na po from time pa po ng Aurora Integrated Area Development Project, yung IADP, until now po, uh, very supportive po ang aming uh, present uh, administration, ang aming governor, si Governor Jerry Noveras, at ngayon po ay yung kanyang namang anak na si uh, Governor Christian Noveras. Uh, we already developed uh, uh, Integrated Watershed Management Plan, initially po dun sa uh, area ng Baler at uh, San Luis, ito po yung uh, developing it sa Bali Watershed Forest uh, Reserve. Uh, Bali, nakagawa na po kami ng isang uh, plan at ito po ay through the help po ng ating uh, sina Dr. Rex sa UPLB in partnership po sa kanila. Uh, nagawa po namin itong plano at at the same time po ay uh, we are preparing for more uh, preparation ng integrated watershed management plan sa lahat po ng aming watershed areas. And uh, ang ito pong watershed management plan ay napakalaking tulong po para po dun sa framework for updating po ng aming mga uh, CLUP, ng aming po mga LCCAPs, LDRMMP. At uh, bali yung aming pong LCCAP ay uh, nagawa na na na-approve na rin po, na-adapt na rin po ng sangguni ang palalawigan. At uh, ito po ay integration ng mga uh, sidra ng mga municipalities. At uh, meron pong mga PPAs ang province na continuing po na ginagawa namin. And uh, napakalaking tulong po nitong watershed management plan na ito po ay isang naming naging reference. Uh, even though ito po ay uh, limited ang funding, uh, ito po ay naging reference namin para sa uh, assistance sa uh, National Government Agency funding through Cash for Work program ng DSWD. Uh, we have ongoing project po funded ng DSWD, uh, DSWD through Cash for Work program. Ang title po ng aming project ay Enhancing Aurora Province Resilience through Climate Responsive and Integrated Watershed Management of Developing It sa Bali Malaya River Watershed Forest Reserve. At ito nga po ay sa San Luis and uh, enhance protection of Pakuga watershed in Maria Aurora through enrichment planting and flood control. Uh, napakaganda po nitong project na to dahil uh, ang beneficiaries po natin dito ay ang bayan ng Maria Aurora at San Luis um, covering eight barangays po and may total budget po ito na 3,334,800. At ang Doon po, ang total beneficiaries po nito is 794 94, na may makakareceive po sila ng 4,200 pesos per beneficiaries. In fact, mamaya pong 1 o'clock, uh, payout na po nila. Payout na po sa simultaneous po sa uh, bayan ng Maria Aurora at San Luis. So napakaganda po nung uh, plano. Ito po ay uh, uh, initially nagamit namin para dito sa uh, Cash for Work program at uh, na tutuwa po kami at ang DSWD ay ikinuntinyo po na popondohan pa rin po nila kami next year para po sa seven watershed areas natin dito sa Aurora na ma-implement po uli ito yung cash for work na ang mismong mga beneficiaries po natin ang magpo-produce ng seedlings at the same time sila rin po ang magtatanim 
uh, para po may uh, enrichment planting and rehabilitation ng ating mga watershed areas dito sa lalawigan ng Aurora. Uh, so, nakikita po namin na uh, napakaganda po nitong plano at uh, ang aming kong major challenges dito ay yung lack of manpower po dun sa ating mga areas na uh, alam naman po natin ang ang LGU ay kulang po lagi na <laughs> ng pondo. So, ang isa pa din po ay yung mga expertise na kailangan namin na alam po namin na makakatulong sa amin ay walang iba kundi po ang ating mga partner po sa UPLB, yung mga expertise din po natin sa ibang uh, national agencies. So, yun po, uh, ang amin pa rin pong uh, naging uh, uh, challenge, uh, kumbaga po ay yung funding Uh, yun nga po, uh, limited and then yung expertise and yung cooperation po na nabanggit din po ni Sir Nelson, yung cooperation po ng ating mga stakeholders na kailangan po nating uh, mapaliwanag sa kanila para makita po nila yung importance at makuha po namin yung support nila. So, yun po, yun po yung mga initial na nakikita namin na gaps dun sa aming implementation ng, ng plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, ma'am, babes. And natutuwa kami marinig at makita na medyo advanced na po pala ang, ang provincial government of Aurora in terms of uh, applying the, the WEM framework. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagbahagi. And, and uh, from, from all the, the messages, the information that uh, the, all the panel members shared, uh, what we see clearly now, nakaredy talaga ang, ang national, ang mga executive departments. Merong mga policies in place na. And it's just a matter of building the capacity ng ating mga LGUs. Tulungan sila paano maging katulad halimbawa ng, ng PG Aurora po. Ngayon po, uh, gusto ko pang marinig from, from our ex Uh, panel members kasi na, na highlight kanina yung mga challenges, mga gaps, mga difficulties in land use planning. Um, ano po ba, uh, what are the current efforts or mga plano para ma-address yung lumulutang pa na gaps po natin, katulad ng mga uh, limited appreciation for the WEM framework, uh, mga conflicting uh, mandates or jurisdiction. Meron po ba tayong uh, naka, nakahanda or pinaplano na po ba para sa susunod po na mga taon? Uh, unahin po natin si Yusek Mercy, ma'am. Hi, Mia. Yeah, yeah, thanks again. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Ano, uh, marami na rin nabanggit kanina, Mia, no? Doon sa uh, 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 manifestation ni Sir Rex, manifestation ng uh, ating kasama sa Aurora, si Ma'am Babes. Uh, at saka, I'm sure na doon sa manifestation ni Director Nelson sa RBCO, there are already some interventions that are being, you know, done to respond to all these issues, no? So, I-limit ko na lang kung ano talaga yung ginagawa ng NEDA, no? Kasi, and this is primarily on the planning and the policy side. And you are probably very much aware na uh, since mer meron kaming National Land Use uh, Committee, di ba? And nabanggit kanina ni uh, Sir Ivan ng Dishud na meron siyang mga counterparts sa uh, regional level, meron siyang counterparts sa uh, provincial level, meron siyang counterpart dun sa local level. And this is really the avenue, the, this is actually the venue in which all of these land use conflicts and land use gaps, you know, especially you know, on the, on the, on the uh, sub-national regions, are discussed and then elevated sa, sa NLOC, no? sa National Land Use Committee, para doon talaga tutugunan, especially if it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it concerns several re regions. No? But what we have been really trying to advocate sa National Land Use, uh, land use uh, uh, Committee was the passage of the National Land Use Act. I think yeah. because we don't have that policy, all of these problems are you know, coming out. No? And we have been you know, you know, uh, doing that. We have been really trying to advocate for the passage of this. Uh, we were a little bit you know, aggressive uh, on no first... first uh, Um, first uh, initial months ni uh, President uh, Duterte, but then, you know, uh, there are some, of course, nan nandiyan yung mga various groups with interest, you know, with, with uh, you know, with uh, certain uh, interests that they are protecting na, you know, coming still, you know, to uh, 
um, going against the the passage of the and, and the national land use plan. But I think you know it the passage of this you know if we have this policy, then we will be able to plan well. Because it define natin yan kung ano talaga yung you know right. arable land, okay. ano talaga yung limits ng forest land, ano talaga ang watershed, ano ano ang ba, you know ang 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 sakop ng watershed and all these things. No? So noong medyo nahihirapan kami na i-push yung national land use plan because of you know several sectoral groups you know that really were really you know sort of hinaharang. Actually, it never moved. Eh. It never moved yeah. during the right. the administration of uh, PRRD. No. Uh, so what we did was again, you know, in an effort really to you know push for it, we came up with an executive order to fast track the implementation of land use related policies. No, we saw nakikita natin na yun nga na nabanggit nga ni, ni Sir uh, Nelson kanina na yung wala tayong updated na mga data. Uh, we need really real time data. No, many of the clubs and you know I'm I'm saying this now because nandito yung issue natin. Many of the clubs are outdated, and I yeah. really hope that you know during this administration that will be given you know really due rec, you know re, due attention. Because without an updated clubs, we will not be able to plan well. And I'm really glad na narinig ko da, kanina kay, 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 kay Sir Nelson that they are doing a lot of things. They are, you know, uh, using a lot of approaches to not develop the clubs in silos. Yeah. Importante talaga yung watershed. Importante talaga yung uh, cross-boundary, you know, uh, because yeah. uh, yung sinasabi niya na meron nang nag, 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 nag ano, sa upland, sa, 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 you know, elevated areas, nag and you know all the, the the rest of the lowland areas will already get flooded. So that uh -huh. you enlightened ako kanina no naririnig ko na you know the shoot is already you know using all of these approaches. Uh -huh. So yon uh unfortunately yung EO hindi rin masyadong natugunan. Okay? Uh so we are hoping that you know during this administration in this administration we will try to push again. You know, for the for the uh, uh, you know for the discussion of the National Land Use Act, and if not, at least an EO to get all of this you know uh, 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 tools that we need for better planning. You know, get updated, get you know uh, uh, you know attended to no In real time uh, data data na kailangan natin for planning and all these things no. And of course, you know, advocacy, na sinasabi nga ni uh, Sir Rex kanina, we really need to, you know, inform, especially the LGUs, Mandana's ruling, once they already get independence from the, from the national government, and there are so many that are going to be devolved, you know, we have to handhold all these LGUs, you know, for them to be able to, you know, make use of these approaches, you know, properly, you know, uh, based on their... On their uh, uh, environmental conditions. Carrying capacity, nabanggit kanina yung population. You know, we have already, there, there are already, you know, very, very clear, clear examples of the carrying capacity uh, issues that, you know, that we, that, uh, we at NEDA, together with other agencies, have really responded to yung Burakai cleanup. We did a carrying capacity, and that's together with UPLB when they defined, you know, what exactly estimated what exactly is the carrying capacity of. You know. Of course, we can go above the about those, but because of technologies that are coming out. But these are all. This should all be, you know, uh, integrated. You know, should be considered mm -hmm. when you do the planning. So, yeah. you actually NEDA has already come up with a manual for urban carrying capacity assessment. This is about to, you know, uh Ano na ito eh? I, 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 I disseminate na yon. We are now, you know, put, uh, putting it in. Uh, we're not going to be publishing it, so that we will, you know, hopefully be able to do some uh, capacity building among the LGUs uh, para itong capacity. We did a uh, carrying capacity with ba to, uh, and ba in Baguio and Tagaytay, and that was the very reason kung bakit we have to come up with a guideline and how to do the urban capacity planning. Kasi iba iba din yung methodologies eh. Primarily because iba iba din yung mga you know uh, physi physiological characteristics of the area. But then if you have this guideline, at least you know you will be able to you know to 
to you know uh, conduct it in a scientific evidence based manner so yun ang yun ang talagang ano and i think marami pang marami pang uh, ginagawa ngayon ng iba ibang uh, ahensya and organization to uh, you know to really address you know these uh, uh, problems numerous problems with regards to land use planning but i think the very very and this already you know uh, a part of my uh, parting words siguro what we really need is really genuine co- cooperation coordination and partnership not only yeah. among us in 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 government but with all the other stakeholders salamat mia thank you Maraming maraming salamat, Yusek, Yusek Mercy. And uh, I'm sure uh, the group of Surex would be willing, at least a technical side, to support you doon sa EO po natin. Uh, that's actually a, a good start po. Ano po. And may, alam natin mahirap yung batas eh. So at least sa EO stage, uh, technical side, uh, sorry Surex, <laughs> pero uh, yun po. It's, it's something that uh, I, I'm sure they, they can help the, the team. Um, okay, so uh, from Neda, we now go to Disud. Sir Ivan, you're back. <laughs> uh, any plans po? Uh, Sir Ivan, are you here with us? Okay, so so we'll get back to Sir Ivan. Uh, we go to Director Nelson. Sir, your response po. Oh, yes. Um I cannot but agree doon sa sinabi ni Yosef Mercy that uh, we really need to have uh, a national policy. And uh, of course, uh, we in the NR are supportive of uh, the passage of the proposed National Land Use Act. Um, sa, sa amin, itong Willow uh, is good. This could be an uh, avenue for convergence of uh, land use plans among agencies. Uh, this can be a venue for collaboration and uh, complementation among other agencies, including the possibility of our uh, private uh, partners, our so-called volunteers, to uh, uh, be uh, in uh, what we are trying to do in uh, watershed management and um, um, to ano, to iterate what I said Karina most probably there should be more uh, use of technology uh, including um, installation of more hydrometeorological uh, instruments for us to have uh, real-time data um, in uh, even in uh, river basin uh, master plans, um, we have a hard time updating our master plans precisely because of uh, the lack of uh, updated data. So probably that's all I can say uh, at this time. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Director Nelson. Uh, sir Ivan, are you back? Okay, so we'll, we'll wait for Sir Ivan, but for now, uh, we want to hear uh, from Sir Rex. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mia, and thank you for the uh, uh, inputs no, uh, of uh, USEC Mercy and uh, Director uh, Nelson. I agree with them. You know, policy reform is a very important part of uh, this process of uh, pushing for the uh, you know, Ridge Street approach to uh, land use planning and development planning. So that's one. Uh, rest assured, USEC Mercy uh, advocacy for uh, the passage of National Land Use Act is uh, a part of uh, of this uh, project. You know, as well as uh, you know, as Mia said, you know, we can probably uh, discuss how we can uh, uh, revive the executive order. You know, in in place of when while waiting for the passage of the National Land Use Act, which we hope you know will be coming soon, and then. Uh, what um, uh, Director Nelson has said uh, uh, a while ago and just now, uh, yung uh, need you know, to uh, to build up the empirical data sets natin, no? mga, mga observation data natin on uh, cli- not only climate, but also on hydrological processes, on biophysical processes, including uh, biodiversity. You know, we have to, you know, we have to invest in that, eh, you know, 
the reason why we need to invest in that is because a good land use planning uh, entails a good understanding of what the impacts, what the biophysical and socioeconomic impacts are of uh, different land use alternatives. You know, now we cannot. You know, we cannot possibly assess that correctly if we don't have a sufficient knowledge and understanding of that, which we can only do or which we can only achieve through investment in research and even in monitoring. And uh, let's remember that uh, land use planning is, um, you know, involves trade-off analysis. You know, there are so many different kinds of land use per unit of land. You know, what is the best that we can do in a unit of land? That will have to be determined by a careful trade-off analysis. Now, unless we know the impacts of each of these land use activities on uh, on environment, on ecosystems, on water, on biodiversity, even on the human security, we cannot possibly, you know, uh, robustly assess which one is the best use for a given area in in the watershed. So, policy investment in policy reforms, investment in uh, in Research, you know, trying to understand more the dynamics of land use, ecosystems, and uh, human systems. You know, that is that is really paramount, and that is going to be very critical as we push, you know, yung uh, yung we look or the reach to reef approach to land use and development and development uh, uh, development planning. And of course, what I just mentioned uh, in 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 the previous session, you know, yung uh, the need to build the capacity talaga no build the capacity of uh, of local development uh, planners mm -hmm. so uh, you know those are what we need to invest on thank you thank you very much sir rex now uh, sir ivan uh, if you're Yun speaking po, we cannot hear you it's okay sir now you're clear okay no, no, uh, all clear. Na <laughs> yes sir naririnig na po uh, Narinig ko rin yung sinabi kanina ni ano ni Yusek uh, Sombilia. Ma'am, uh, we fully support po yung naluwa no. At ayun uh, nga kahit EO maitawid po natin, mas mapapalakas po natin yung ano, yung paniningil or <laughs> pagseta yeah. sa maling paggamit ng lupa. So sana po ma-push natin yun. and uh, sana ano uh, gusto namin kasi ano eh ma, -ad ma tawag dito, ma, ma inform din yung ating mga kasamahan on the ground sa kahalagahan ng pag-push ng National Land Use Act. Kasi as of now, parang ano eh, parang uh, may iba-iba pang versions, no? nalilito pa sila on the ground. Pero we have to be, ano din, uh, maging isa din doon sa stand sa Naluwa. And uh, yun po, narinig ko rin yung sa issue ng financing. no uh, We have current talks din uh, with different agencies. Paano ba matatawid no? yung uh, from planning to financing? And uh, ayun, gusto yeah. namin, yeah. ano, uh, nakipag-usap na rin kami with DILG. Paano yung mga PPAs ay maitatawid natin sa CDP uh, to LDIP to AIP? Yeah. How yeah. are we going to ensure that? Yun yung isa sa mga ano natin. And magkaroon ng isang system, no, kung saan ipapasok yung mga PPAs na mga ito yeah. para makita natin ano ba yung funded and unfunded. So mm -hmm. that kung masyadong malaki or medyo... Um, Complicated implement yung project, doon na po papasok yung ating national government agencies. And then, ayun po, uh, we support din yung building coalition, no? Uh, yung magkakatabi ng mga LGUs, um, magkakatabi, uh, magkakasama sa isang watershed. Uh, pinupush po din namin yun. And uh, yun din, uh, yung participatory planning, no? And monitoring. Mahalaga din po yung pag-organize natin on the ground so that uh, kung medyo natutulog yung ating mga LGUs, our people on the ground, our community on the ground will push for the implementation of the plans. Yeah. Pag sinabi na bawal itong gawin, itong mga tao na natin sa baba ang magpuput ng pressure sa ating mga LGUs as well as kasama na rin po yung ating mga national government agencies. So kaya po mahalaga po yung binanggit aming monitoring framework. As well as gusto rin po namin ano, no? Gusto rin po namin uh, ma-highlight yung connection ng mga LGU sa SUCs. Kasi nga po, um, ang nakikita namin, sana ang partnership ng LGU with the SUCs, ito yung technical arm din ng, ng LGUs kasi we recognize din po yung uh, kakulangan sa manpower ng LGUs. No? No. And ayun, uh, pinag-uusapan na rin namin kasi nandun sa, sa, sa EO na, re na re release 
na connection sa Mandanas ruling is yung ano no yung capacity building no so uh, pinag-uusapan din namin yung ano mga regional hubs o yung mga regional uh, technical assistance na makakatulong sa ating mga SUs ah, sa mga ating mga LGUs and then yes uh, we recognize po yung data build up and uh, yung ating mga uh, inform- information management system mahalaga pong ma-institutionalize na rin ito sa ating mga LGUs Bakit? Uh, napansin namin kasi kung kailan sila ni-require ni Mayor na maggumawa ng CLUP, saka lang po sila magkukollect ng data. So kailangan na uh, masolusyonan natin yung problema when to, collect, who to collect, ah, when to collect, where to collect, and how to collect the data, how to organize the data, so that pagdating po ng pagpaplano, lalo na sa, sa pinang uh, Ridge to Reef, no, ay naka, naka, ano, na, nakahanda na sila. Uh, analysis part na lang yung ano analysis part na lang yung uh, yung uh, pag-uusapan natin so with that po yun po yung aming ano nakikitang uh, mga solutions and uh, ways forward po thank you thank you thank you very much sir Ivan uh, i'm really happy uh, nakakatuwa po na ma- marinig lahat po yung mga nangyayari na uh, we started this, this discussion defining what is a whim uh, that is integral to to ensuring the integrity of our watershed uh, nabanggit na rin po yung mga gaps, mga challenges, mga possible solutions, uh, mga policy reforms that we need. Uh, ngayon po, I, I think this is the good opportunity to bring up the Wheel of Advocacy Project, Sir X. Um, can you share to us the, the purpose or the intent of the project? And uh, nasan po ang project sa, sa usaping ito? Uh, hearing now all the, all the challenges, the, the, the solutions that uh, is be, the, 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 sorry, the solutions that are offered uh, and, and the yeah. plans being made by our executive departments. Uh, saan po tayo uh, gagalaw papasok? Okay. Sir. Um, let me, pwede ba ako mag-share ng, ano, ng uh, three yes, slides? Sir. Sure, sir. Just Opo. to, just to, ano, just to uh, synthesize yung concept ng WeLoop, ano? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Go, go. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Mm-hmm. Iba pala mag-share dito, ano? <laughs> Okay. Uh, sa ilalim, sir. There's right. a share button. Uh-huh. And then... Uh... Choose a window, sir. Uh-huh. Bakit pinapa-upload sa akin yung file? Sorry. Uh, I can't I can't show it. Um, if, if, if somebody from the Willow Project uh, shared to us, to our team, the slide, we can share it. Okay. Anyway, uh, it's not, you know, I cannot, I cannot share. don't know why. Okay. If, if your team has it, sir, we can share it. They, they can give it to us, sir. We can share it. Um, I don't think they have it. I just, okay. you know, I just prepared it now. Anyway. All right. Uh, the uh, the we look you know, again just to you know, just to emphasize you know uh, we're not you know we're not advocating for a new guidelines we're advocating for how we can uh, you know uh, push I mean uh, help in pushing you know uh, for a more robust implementation of the reach reef approach and uh, exactly what we want to address are the gaps that were mentioned you no know? a lot of them policy capacity building you know data sets uh, uh accountability of you know, accountability of lgus to implement uh, uh to implement the uh, kanilang comprehensive uh, comprehensive land use plan as framework for cdp and cdp as framework for you know, as an integration of the sectoral plans and so on so these are you know these are all the concerns of uh, of willow project and uh we are you know we are doing this not uh, by ourselves, you know, because uh, we understand that this advocacy project is nothing without the participants or participation of the national government agencies concerned. And hence, let me just, my, my computer is about to die. Let me just plug in. All right. So, uh, you know, and, and that is why we consider the partnership of, uh, of uh, uh, DSHUD, NEDAD, DANR, DILG, you know, as an important uh, part of the uh, 
the uh, stakeholder groups that will push together for this uh, wheel loop or the strengthening of the implementation of the ridge tariff uh, land use uh, land use planning. Um, we are piloting this in two sites, two LGUs, Los Baños and San Gabriel, you know, and um, uh, we hope that these two pilot areas can be showcases for uh, other LGUs. And as we, you know, go through the process of applying the Ridge to Reef uh, Comprehensive Land Use Planning and LCCA preparation, LDR, LDRMP, and preparation of other sectoral plans in one planning exercise, we want other LGUs to observe and uh, we will be, you know, we will be uh, uh, setting up a platform by which uh, they can uh, observe, you know, how it is done, not, you know, not the complete process, but the key processes involved in this, uh, in this uh, ridge to reef planning uh, uh, protocols. So that's, you know, that's what we will do. Uh, and then the other one is to advocate, no, to advocate for uh, key policies related to uh, uh, related to rich to reef landscape approach, and uh, foremost of which will be the National Land Use Act. We're also going to push for the Sustainable Forest Management Act, you know, which is uh, which is an important part of the landscape, you know, and yet uh, uh, we continue to, you know, we continue to uh, to. Uh, uh, to be operating under uh, policies that are uh, premised, you know, uh, on conditions that are no longer uh, existing now. You know, a lot of uh, the assumptions of the old policies for forest management has changed, and we need to have a new uh, forest uh, management uh, code, you know, to guide us. And then also. Uh, uh, we are looking at, you know, we are looking at uh, the executive order, you know, that was just mentioned by uh, USEC Mercy. You know, we uh, we will be interested in uh, working uh, with NEDA and DSHUD in uh, reviving this, you know, and making sure that uh, we uh, we get this off on the ground and this time with uh, greater impact. Um, we are um, uh, we are also going to work. You know, we're working with a lot of different. Um, uh, stakeholder groups, you know, like the uh, League of Municipalities, League of Cities of the Philippines, League of Provinces, you know, because we recognize that uh, these are critical or uh, uh, these are uh, vital uh, organizations, you know, of local government units that can really help push for this. So uh, it's a big task, you know. Uh, I we're just realizing that now, especially with a lot of hurdles, you know. Uh, including the change of administration, which we are facing actually with our two pilot sites, unfortunately. But uh, we are, you know, hopeful that these changes are going to be for the better. And so uh, we are optimistic that even with this slight uh, delays and uh, slight, you know, obstacles to this uh, project, we know that uh, we can end this project with the desired impacts that we want to achieve. So, uh, Mia, I think, uh, you know, those are just what I want to uh, say about uh, WeLoop. And uh, WeLoop is about, WeLoop is about uh, our, uh, a certain LGU, you know, a certain LGU preparing a comprehensive land use plan based on, based on the zoning and watershed management plans of the watersheds where they straddle, you know. So uh, we cannot... We cannot have a ridge to reef approach to uh, comprehensive land use planning without without the zoning and management plan of a watershed. Simply, you know, simply put, it is it is it should be the basis. It should be the basis of comprehensive land use planning and other sectoral development planning. What is good for the watershed should be what is good for CLUP and what is good for the sectoral development uh, development plan. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, we cannot, uh, you know, we cannot ignore the fact that uh, watersheds are uh, playing its important uh, role by providing us the vital ecosystem services, and that's what we want to protect, you know, in ridge to reef approach to land use and development planning, and that's what we want to monitor. By the way, you know, and that's what we want to monitor, uh, or one of the key indicators that we will monitor if the local government units are really faithful. In implementing a ridge to reef based comprehensive land use plans you know without that uh, you know we can 
it, it will be difficult for us to establish accountability among the local uh, government uh, units. Um, and uh, us coming from the academe, uh, we are and uh, we are interested to facilitate also the uh, the um, the development of a strong partnership between academe and the local government units because recognizing that you know we have a lot of uh, academic uh, institutions or higher education institutions all over the country you know they're almost there in every province and in every province there there are more than one you know one state universities and colleges so uh, these are really strategic partnership that we must uh, help to uh, to be forged you know for uh, advancing the rich to reef uh, land use planning so um, Mia I think that's uh, all about mm -hmm. I have to say thank you very much uh, so much to say but yes, uh, I know sir but I but I, I but I am very you know but I am very glad that our partners you know said a lot about you know those things that are important to reach to reef approach I think um, you know uh, the project will uh, you know will carry this forward with us. It's it's you know it's really very enriching to in, uh, enriching to hear our uh, partners talk about their own experiences and what they're doing right now. Right, sir, and and we're actually looking forward to to a future where all the our LGUs will be able to adopt Willow yeah. and and. Um, Taking off from that, uh, I want to invite again Miss Babes. Uh, I know nasa advanced stage na po kayo ng ng pag uh, aaral ng Willow na apply niyo na siya. But let me go back to the point where uh, that you your group uh, was still working that we're, we're still was still working with the group of Surex. May I'm sure may mga challenges yan, may mga pain points yan. Uh, it, I know it's not easy. So para lang po sa kaalaman ng ating mga uh, ad colleagues from from the LGU other enros ano po yung dapat ma-expect nila pag kailangan nilang paghanda paghandaan uh, bali on our part po uh, dun sa implementation natin ng mga plans sa uh, paggawa po uh nga po limited po yung aming expertise kaya kami ay patuloy po na makikipag-partner sa UPLB para po uh, matugunan yung uh, knowledge para ma magawa namin yung mga plans po ng aming watershed areas. And uh, yung with regards naman po dun sa mga funding, uh, we are lucky po na sinusuportahan po ng aming uh, administration, ng governor namin, ng, ng Noveras, at saka po ng Sangguni ang Palalawigan, na mag-allocate po kami ng funding every year para po dun sa aming uh, implementation ng plan at preparation ng other watershed management plan. At natutuwa po ako, nabanggit po ni Sir Ivan, na sana nga po yung Mandanas ruling ay uh, maging tugon doon sa pangailangan po ng funding. Kasi nga po, uh, sa dami po ng uh, na, na devolved na function, eh hindi naman po kami nakaka-assure na yung pondo ay mabibigyan talaga ng priority yung uh, aming mga plans para po sa uh, protection ng ating uh, mga watershed areas. Uh, sana po ay at the same time yung mga expert, yung mga tao natin na kailangan para po gawin uh, itong ating mga plano at ma-implement ay matugunan din po nung ating uh, uh, funding na manggagaling through manda, dun sa manda na suling. Ano po? At uh, ang, kami po ay yung aming pong SIDRA sa lahat ng LGUs ay na-conduct na, na. At uh, the result of SIDRA ay nagamit na rin po para po dun sa aming mga LC Cups at saka sa mga LDRRM plan po namin and for updating po ng aming uh, CLUP. And uh, prescribed sectoral plans po ng our uh, mga LGUs namin. Uh, we have yet uh, complete this process but uh, we are convinced that the watershed approach po uh, will help the integration of all our plans uh, providing a common physical framework. Uh, using the watershed as integrated framework is very challenging for us po at uh, kailangan po namin ng strong support from the UPLB and other partners since our technical uh, expertise is not enough. So we needed to, uh, uh, the part partners para po to, to, magawa na namin yung whole process. Uh, uh, the same thing po uh, yung aming uh, other uh, challenges na 
sa funding, uh, hopefully po ay matutugunan ng uh, sa Mandanas ruling. At uh, we hope po na itong watershed approach po para po sa local uh, land use and development plan planning will also be used or supported by the provincial, uh, regional, and national planning officer. Uh, for example po, uh, it will be a strong incentives for LGUs to use po the ridge to reach, reach approach to land use and development planning if the provincial, regional, and national government offices will give priority funding to development projects specified po sa LGU CDPs and sectoral plans that are updated using the ridge to reach uh, approach based dun po sa kanilang mga CLUPs. So, umaasa po kami na uh, matutulungan. Uh, napakaganda po ng mga isineshare ng ating mga panelists na ito po ay partner uh, between national, regional, and local. Uh, nandito po kami as example po, uh, uh, kahit uh, maliit lang ang province uh, ng Aurora, ay pinipi dahil kami nga po ay forested, alam naman po natin na uh, um, malaki pa po yung area namin ng forest at uh, napaka-critical po kung ito ay mapapabayaan kaya kailangan po namin uh, protection na yung aming uh, mga watershed areas uh, using nga po itong uh, sa ridge to reach, reach approach dahil nga po maapektuhan po yung aming mga uh, community kung hindi po namin pangangalagaan yung aming uh, uh, forest areas yung ating mga watershed areas which is the very source po ng ating uh, mga basic uh, needs, uh, patulad po ng ating mga water. So, yun po, uh, umaasa po kami na ma uh, hindi po malilimutan or mapapasama pa rin po ang Aurora sa mga support sa mga national agencies, lalo na dito sa Ridge to Ridge uh, program po. Uh, yun lang po at salamat. Maraming maraming salamat, Ma'am Babes. And uh, para po sa lahat ng ating members of the panel, uh, maraming salamat po ulit. We've learned a great deal from from the discussion. However, we're not releasing you yet. <laughs> At this stage, we'd like uh, to offer the audience an opportunity to ask questions and invite our panelists to, to respond. So do we have our first? Okay. So here, oh, miss, from Mr. Nolly. Diwanag. Uh, I believe he's from he's a colleague from from the media. Ang bagong klima. Ang tanong po, maari po bang magtayo ng mas maraming community watershed at posible po ba at makakatulong po ba nagayahin ng bansa ang ipinatupad na na International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid uh, Ikrisat Community Watershed uh, sa India na nagsimula noong 2009. Sakop ang 3.1 milyong ektarya at napakinabangan ng 4.4 milyong magsasakang pamilya na tumaas ang ani ng hanggang 66 na porsyento sa India. Um, so Rex, can, can I invite hmm. you to respond or anyone from the panel? Yeah, honestly, I am not familiar with this uh, program of ICRISAT, you know. Mm -hmm. But apparently what is being talked about here is a community-based uh, watershed management program you know, uh, where the farming, uh, where the farming communities are themselves the one managing the watersheds, you know, that uh, provides them the water. And, you know, that's a good concept, really. And that's the concept that uh, that DNR is also embracing, you know, that uh, community communities play important roles, you know, active roles in managing our watersheds. And uh, what is good with this is that, you know, even the, lo the, the lowland communities, not only the upland communities, are engaged in watershed management. And rightly so, you know, kung mga farmers sila and they have the bigger stakes in terms of water being provided by the watershed, they should be, you know, they should be engaged uh, uh, as well in the management and protection of the watershed. Uh, and uh, again, as I said, you know, May policies na naman at programang ganito ang DNR, you know. It's just really a matter now of uh, expanding it to the lowland communities. Ano? Kasi dito mga farmers, eh. No? Farmers ang kasama sa um, watershed management. The answer then to the question is, yes, we can do that. And there are, you know, there are programs like that being implemented by the DNR. Mm. Uh, can can anyone uh, or does anyone would like to would like to add to that? Would anyone would like to add it? Uh, yes, uh, Mia. 
Um, there are uh, community watersheds that have been devolved to the local government units. Um, this is part of uh, the uh, Mandalas rolling implementation. And um, right now, we are uh, also uh, looking at uh, payment for environmental services for water use. So, uh, sooner or later, um, we will be able to put uh, into uh, action um, uh, the payment for ecosystem services. And right now, we are um, fine-tuning uh, and uh, the the, uh, the guidelines. Uh, we will be having consultations with affected stakeholders. But yes, uh, it's possible to come up with the uh, uh, communal watersheds. No, naman sa mga watersheds natin, marami yung tinatawag natin na sub-watersheds. And we can have um, sub-watershed uh, planning units. Okay. I just, yeah, I just recalled, yes. no? I think it's it's the, uh, it's the ILG, you know, that has the policy creating a community watershed. You know? Am I right, mm -hmm. Director Nelson? It's from the, I think it's in the uh, local government code that they provide uh, that. Yes, uh, Dr. Cross. Uh, it's part of what has already been devolved to the LGUs. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you. For, for our second question, do we have the second question now? From Ms. Annette Sum Sumawai, considering there are existing regional physical planning plan, do do we have a way to monitor whether such plans adopt a ridge to reef approach or that the natural resources are developed, managed, and conserved in an optimal manner? Uh, this may be uh, addressed to the SWOOD, sir. Hello po. Uh, in, Hi, terms of regional, in terms of regional planning po, Seneda na po yun. Uh, hanggang provincial mm -hmm. level lang po kami. Okay. Yus Yusek, baka po, mas maganda kayo po makasagot doon. <laughs> okay lang, sige lang. No, but certainly, I think you can, ano, kasi uh, the, the regional plans are, you know, are formulated based on uh, provincial plans. No? But usually, plans, they have yung sinasabi natin na uh, indicators, okay? And those indicators are usually, you know, uh, based on the data that they see how things would be moving on the ground, no? So we monitor those indicators, no? And I'm sure that the regional physical, by just its mere name, physical planning, physical framework plan, you know, it really considers those, you know, ecosystems, ridge to reef, uh, reef to ridge approaches, no? Uh, so, you know, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, this regional physical play, planning, uh, this, uh, physical framework plans, really consider the reach to reach up, up approach probably but there are probably this have been ano eh ito ay nagawa siguro mga few years back so there's really need to you know uh, update them kasi nagbabago because of typhoons because of you know uh, human activities nagbabago yung environment so we really need to you know uh, update them you know at a certain period of time and it's very you know we are very you know, fortunate now but marami na tayong mga gadgets, you know, to, you know, to, to, to map the areas. Meron na tayong mga drones, you know, things are, have already been a little bit much easier, you know, to, to update and, uh, you know, update and uh, uh, redo the plan considering current, uh, current information, I mean, current, uh, current data. Kaya kailangan talaga natin yung real-time data na nababanggit every now and then. Kailangan natin ang, uh, you know, uh, 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 monitoring. Very, you know, very, very, uh, very good monitoring and evaluation, you know, evaluation uh, system na makikita natin yung, yung, yung mga, yung mga paano, ano, ano ang nangyayari doon at para matutuguran natin kaagad. So yes, uh, the answer is yes, and you know uh, we have to do that with several with 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 the use of you know tools, with use of systems and things like that, para makita natin talaga that it's really you know 
moving to the objective that we want to, uh, you know, that we want to achieve, you know, with, with those plans. Thank you, Mia. Back to you. Thank you, Yusek. Yeah. Yes, sir, Rex. Yeah, oh, gusto ko lang dagdagan yung sinabi ni Yusek Mercy, ano? Uh, maganda yung mga sinabi niya eh. But uh, kung ako kung ako ang tatanong eh, ano, how do I tell whether there is whether the regional physical plans, you know, uh, ay ginawa using the rich reef approach. Ang ang unang titingnan ko, meron bang meron bang river basin plan, meron bang watershed plan na ginamit as basis for uh, the regional ano, regional planning. Yun yung una, no? yun yung basic na titingnan ko muna. And then, pag meron, then pupunta na ako doon sa sinabi ni Yusek Bersi. No? Kailangan, monitor natin <coughs> kung talagang honest to goodness yung ridge to reef approach sila. Tingnan natin kung yung mga indicators ng environment, ng, ecos ng ecosystem, ng human security, you know, uh, poverty reduction, ay na-achieve. You know, na-achieve as, <coughs> as or based doon sa based doon sa plano ng uh, river basin na limbawa no <coughs> or ng mga watersheds na nasa sakupan nung nung, uh, nung region certain region and i think dito matutuwa si director nelson eh, no kasi ang rbco have already prepared yung master plan ng 18 major river basins that uh, that comprises almost <coughs> how many percent of our total land area no Pag yung, yung mga river basins na yan, ang ginawa nila ay naandiyan dyan na may plano na pwede nang gamitin yan na sa regional development planning at saka pwede nang gamitin sa provincial no? sa provincial development planning. No? Pwede na nilang gamitin yan. And then the, the local government can follow suit no? by basing their management plan naman doon sa mga maliliit na watersheds where they are a part of. Uh, Director Nelson? I was about to say that uh, we have uh, integrate, uh, integrated uh, management and development plans for the major river basins. There are 18 all in all in the country today. Um, the, uh, these are not only regional, some of them uh, straddles across uh, regions. For example, yung Cagayan River Basin, uh, headwaters nun, Region 3, and then uh, Cordillera, and uh, lastly, it goes down to uh, Region 2, Cagayan Valley. So, we have a master plan for that. Uh, we are right now uh, uh, planning for the updating of uh, these uh, master plans. Um, that would include uh, making them uh, more uh, climate responsive uh, to incorporate uh, disaster risk uh, management concerns. So, yun, uh, the, the answer is yes. There are uh, regional physical uh, plants at present. Hello po. Pwede pong magkontag din, Ms. Mia. Yes, sir, Ivan. Ayun po. Uh, basically, yung uh, sa part naman ng... Uh, ng uh, provincial plans no uh, dagdagan ko lang uh, sa experience kasi namin uh, nabanggit ko nga kanina nag-release na kami ng ano no ng uh, updated uh, review and approval process at isa sa mga parameters for checking namin is yung uh, compatibility ng uses no at uh, pag minsan nahuhuli doon namin nahuhuli yung ano eh nahuhuli yung mga incompatible uses for example dun sa medyo taas na part meron silang um, ano ina-identify na activity na hindi compatible or maapektuhan sa baba tapos nakikita namin uh, na hindi sila nagbigay ng ano ng policy options or proposed uh, mitigating measures doon namin sila na check no kung kung uh, kung na consider nila yon as as well as yung ano eh uh, napapansin ng team kung hindi na address din yung mga katabing ano katabing uh, LGUs uh, nakikita namin kung hindi sila nag-uusap eh so with that no with that uh, bago namin sila i-approve as of the present moment na nakikita namin yun at nakokomenta na namin yun uh, so that we we ensure na yung 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 uh, reach to rip approach ay uh, na 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 invite dong ano nung ating mga plano at least sa uh, provincial level at saka sa uh, sa CLUP. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have. Pwede bang, 
Bia, pwede yes. bang mag, 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 uh, magtanong lang kay Ivan ng isang question? Okay. Yes, sir. Sige po. <laughs> Ivan, um, at Sige, pwede kayang, po, ano, pwede kayang yes, ang gamitin natin pwede kayang gamitin natin na primary screener no kung yung by ridge to reef approach yung sinabi ko kanina meron bang planong ginamit ng watershed kasi pag bumuo ka ng isang watershed plan supposedly doon mo na ma-identify ngayon you know ano yung what's best for the upstream midstream downstream coastal areas doon mo na masisiguro yon eh and then that will then become the basis now of for you checking uh, yung bang impact ng inyong uh, plano in the upland you know will not impair what is in the lowland or in the coastal but the primary screener is ano eh, uh, we can talk about that now we can discuss about that kasi may mga yeah. ano, may, may mga may mga issues related diyan ano yeah. this is something that we can discuss siguro with NEDA and with DNR no na uh, baka po, pwedeng ano muna, ang gawin nating screener talaga, ridge to reef talaga yan, pag mayroong binasihan na completed watershed or river basin master plan. Because then we can yes. be assured na pagka consistent sila doon sa, ano, sa, sa watershed zoning plan and management plan, now we are assured that uh, yung impacts ng upland to lowland and vice versa, ay ano na yan, kumbaga that's already been assessed and uh, and uh, agreed upon by the stakeholders. Okay. I'm sure uh, marami po ano, tayong uh, <laughs> gustong pag-usapan and we have uh, we'll, we'll a lot time later for that. <laughs> Would that be okay, Sir Ivan and Sir Rex? Yeah, sige yeah, po, after. sige po. Okay, uh, okay po. No. Oh, po. Okay, so we have time for one last question. From Ms. Laila Kanonoy, would watershed-based planning help the country achieve the SDGs? How? Or how would? So um, this perhaps can be addressed to USEC. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. You know, dun sa 18 or 17 SDGs, lahat yan address niya. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lahat yan ma-address niya. Kasi, because if you, you, you know, if you do, uh, you know, land use planning, very, very good land use planning, considering all the ecosystems, you know, uh, definitely mag improve ang production, mag improve ang livelihood, ma-protectahan ang mga tao, you know, yeah. ma-correct siguro yeah. yung, yung uh, you know, the, the greenhouse gases na pupunta sa, ano, that's yeah. causing the climate change. Yeah. So, Everything the one to eighteen, one to seventeen uh, SDGs will be benefited with uh, with this approach. So yeah. that's a quick answer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thank you. Agree, agree. Thank, thank you, thank you to all who submitted the questions. Um, however, we cannot entertain everyone, but uh, we'll take note of all those questions. Uh, we will reach out to you. Pakii pakiiwan lang po ng email addresses nyo sa comment section. So we're at this stage where uh, we reach the, the, the end. Um, final words. I would be requesting just the final words from all of our panel members. Uh, what should be the priority or the recommendations to completely integrate or implement the WEM framework? Or at the very, very least, facilitate its integration or implementation. So alam ko po kanina may mga nasabi na tayo, pero if there's... This uh, one thing, the top priority, ano po iyon? Umpisahan po natin. Ihuli na po natin si Sir Rex. <laughs> Punta po muna tayo. Uh, sige, Sir Ivan. Ayun. Um, paano ba? Um, mahalaga yung ano eh. Mahalaga yung uh, ma-inform yung LGU. The, uh, yeah. Sa simula pa lang ng pagpaplano. Okay. Okay. Mahalaga inform sila. Kasi kung hindi, kung hindi nila alam yung concept, uh, they yeah. will just do uh, the usual planning na nangyayari on the ground. So mahalaga yung ano no, mahalaga yung advocacy, mahalaga yung pagko-communicate ng konsepto nung ano, nung uh, nung nung watershed approach sa kanila. So with that yun po yung ano, yun na nakikita ko na uh, mahalaga. Director Nelson Yes, uh, siguro uh, pinaka-importante yung um, that the implementing mechanisms are uh, in place. Um, 
gaya nga yung napanggit natin, uh, importante na merong uh, enabling law to uh, more or less uh, firm up what we are trying to do. Then, uh, of course, uh, siguro on the part of the local government units, um, kinakailangan may empowered sila in terms of uh, providing uh, technical expertise uh-huh. as well as uh, providing them uh, yung options on uh, how they can uh, sustain uh, yung uh, uh, functions that have already been uh, devolved to them. Yeah. So, sa akin, yeah. that would be the more important uh, important things. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from our LGU, Ma'am Babes. Uh, yun po, uh, totoo po, uh, uh, sinusundan ko yung sinasabi ni Sir Ivan na talagang dapat po ay aware ang mga uh, ating mga local chief executive, yung ating mga planners, dapat alam po nila yung uh, importance nitong reads to reads, itong uh, approach na to, at uh, kailangan po namin ng technical uh, expertise at uh, knowledge na manggagaling po talaga sa ating partner uh, institution, ng ating academy, ng UPLB po, uh, matulungan talaga kami na maipaliwanag sa kanila yung kahalagahan yeah. para po uh, may, may apply po nila dun sa, sa mga pagpaplano. At uh, ganun din po, uh, mapaliwanag natin na kung ano yung kahalagahan dun sa ating mga planners, lalo din po sa ating mga local chief executives at nang ganun po ay mabigyan po ng kaukulang pansin at ng pondo uh, para po uh, maisagawa po ito ng tama at naayon po dun sa ating mga policy. Mm-hmm. Yun lang po. Yusek Mercy and then Sir Rex. Yeah. Thank you, Mia. Yeah. Of course, the very, very first thing would be the enabling reforms na nabanggit already. You know, and the second thing is a well-formulated plan that has to be implemented well, genuinely, and that has to be monitored properly, and that has to be reported mm-hmm. para makita natin kung, you know, uh, we are really on the, on the right direction. And mm-hmm. to do this, to, all, to do all of this, we need to have really those data, those information, mm-hmm. you know, uh, na kailangan natin, you know, to, to be well-informed, to be evidence-based yung mga 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 uh, ipapasok natin na mga interventions and capacity building and nandiyan na development advancement of technology nandiyan na research and development andun na lahat so uh yan if we can do that i think you know we are we're going to be in a, a good ano uh track and uh make use of the watershed ecosystem management very well thank you thank you yusek sir Ano pang sasabihin ko? Wala na, nasabi na lahat yung mga choices ko. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway uh, you know, let me, you know, siguro, let me give importance to something that we cannot wait, you know, something that we cannot wait for before we take action. Ano yun? Yung investment natin sa research. You know, investment natin sa long-term research and monitoring, trying to understand yung dynamic interaction between the human and natural systems, you no? Kasi napakahalaga nun eh. Just what I said I, uh, you know, uh, previously. No? We cannot do land use planning analysis, which one is the best, if we don't know what are the specific impacts of a particular land use you know, on, on ecosystems and on people. No? So we cannot make which one is the best use you know, if we don't know what will be the impact, let's say, of uh, agriculture on soil, on water, on biodiversity, you know, on human security, on uh, on disaster risk, you know, unless we know all of those, you know, we cannot make a really informed decision on what is the best use of a given area of land. And so, you know, as I said, uh, investment talaga dito is very, very important. Eh, no? This is going to be very, very important investment. But this is not something. But this is something that we cannot wait, you know, before we take action. We take action now, and that is what we loop is doing. You know, we advocate for these things that we can do now. That we can, uh, yeah, we can do now. You know, even without, without uh, complete or sufficient understanding of the human and natural system interaction. But it doesn't mean that it's not important. 
we should start now you know if we want to benefit from research of long term studies of ecosystems and people interaction we need to begin now because it takes a while before we uh, before we get uh, to have a solid knowledge you know uh, hindi lang pwedeng research and monitoring for one year or two years or three years or five years you know 10 years minimum yan no minimum yan but uh, I tell you, these kinds of studies and monitoring of the environment and ecosystems have been uh, legislated by eh, the U.S. No? and funded for 35 years. You know, for 35 years. Because that's, you know, that to them is how a knowledge on the interactions between humans and environment and ecosystems you know, can be well established. But, you know, five, ten years, you know, maybe maybe uh, a good start for us but we need to start again or now no so Mia? Yun lang muna yes. sa akin, yeah. Mia, no? Opo. Uh, you sec yes po yeah can i can i add kasi narinig ko yung investment eh. uh -huh. you know one thing that we should really do you know in all you know uh formulation of projects and programs is to do a cost benefit analysis yeah yeah you know uh Sometimes we 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 forego some of the social benefits eh, hmm. now, which are really you know going to be very costly if we don't if we don't you know consider yeah. them. So exactly. I think, uh, and that's one thing that we are you know be be uh, uh, institute instituting as a change in project evaluation in NEDA hmm. to you know do a really uh, you know honest to goodness uh, cost benefit analysis hindi lang dahil economic cost or economic benefits but also the other you know other uh, benefits that yeah. uh, that is uh, you know that is attached to to yeah. to, to the project so uh, yun narinig ko kasi yung investment kaya oops o nga kailangan ko mabanggit ito yeah. thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone wow awesome um it's it's really reassuring uh, to know that uh, the important agencies we've invited here you said thank you so much neda uh, sir ivan rbco pg and ropo uh, ublb of course uh, it's reassuring to know that all of us support watershed resilience programs and the all the activities related to that alongside uh, the OSTP card. And we hope that this conversation will result in more projects, more advocacy reforms that promote sustainability of watersheds, uh, and not only watershed, uh, the entire ecosystems and people, of course. And ultimately, uh, to the resilient and sustainable development of local and national communities. Again, thank you very much to our panelists. And uh, right now, uh, we would like to present the following certificate of appreciation to all of our panel members. And the certificate reads as the Department of Science and Technology, DOST, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, PICARD, awards this certificate of appreciation to all members of the panel for serving as a panelist during the Polyciencia panel talk on watershed-based land use planning and management in the Philippines held on July 7, 2022, 10 a.m., via Facebook Live, given the 7th day of July, 2022, signed Reynaldo Villabora, Executive Director. And we award the certificates to Dr. Rex Victor Cruz, Yusek Mercedita Sombelia, Forrester Nelson Vigorospe, Mr. Mick, Iva, Mick Ivan V. Sumilang, and Ms. Maria Teresa P. De Luna. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat. Thank you, everyone. Now, thank you. Um, may we thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am, sir. May we invite Dr. Feliciano G. Calora, DOST Picard's Deputy Executive Director for R&D to formally close our program. Um. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's it's almost lunchtime. I'd like to, uh, on behalf of the OST Picard, I would like to express our gratitude and appreciation to all of the panelists and the participants in this uh, Polycentia second panel talk on the study uh, institutionalization of guidelines on wa watershed uh, integrated area land use planning towards resiliency. 
Uh, in, in the Philippines, there are currently around 140 critical watersheds. Uh, today's event aims to encourage you, our partners, to be part of this step toward proactively engaging in relevant policy issues. The panel discussion served an important purpose by bringing experts together to share with us their views, experiences, and knowledge that we can use in formulating needed reforms. We heard our guest on what the watershed ecosystem management framework is all about. Its importance to the integration of physical planning at the national and local levels. The gaps in implementing WEM framework at different levels and of planning and management and the uh, proposed WILOP and why it is advocated to be institutionalized. Although the conversations might not have been sufficient to address these concerns, we believe that this is a good start because we clarified and conveyed some of the, difficult, of the difficulties pertaining to the state of the Philippine watersheds. The more we understand the concerns around um, surrounding watershed ecosystem management, the higher our, our prospects of success with our projects and activities aimed to improve the resilience and sustainability of watersheds. I would like to thank our viewers again for all of your support and participation in this panel talk. We hope that today will just be one of the many more opportunities where we can deliver and strengthen our commitment to protecting and preserving our watersheds. May our collective efforts pave the way for a more amplified and widespread advocacy for watershed-based land use planning and management in the Philippines. We also intend to collaborate with more policy researchers and experts, advocate for policy reforms, and provide strategic insights to policymakers. Before I end, may I take this opportunity to thank our guests for today, our panelists, Yusek Mercedita Sumbilia, um, Forrester Nelson Gorospe, Mr. M uh, Mick Ivan Sumilang, um, Ms. Maria Teresa De Luna, uh, Dr. Rex Cruz. I would also like to take this advantage to take advantage of this opportunity to congratulate the project team led by Dr. Vida Carandang for the fruitful partnership and for their accomplishments in promoting the resiliency and sustainability of watersheds, ecosystems, and people. We look forward to a continued partnership involving our stakeholders, such as local government units, the private sector, civil society, the academe, and the media in the years to come. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Dr. Calora. Few reminders, please don't forget to answer the customer feedback form through the link provided in the chat or comment box. And uh, you will receive your e-certificates after you filled out the CSF form. Again, thank you, everyone. Maraming maraming salamat. And see you again in the next Policiancia panel talk.